Good morning and welcome to worship. Wow, okay, a little sleepy today. I'm assuming that you online are wide awake, have your coffee cup in your hand, and you're ready to worship with us. We have gathered as the people of God to celebrate God's presence, God's leading, God's mercy and grace, and ever, ever love for us. God never fails. We have a chance to come into God's presence to be reminded of that, be renewed and restored to go back into the world, to give the world through our words, but through our life, the good news of God's faithfulness. Hear these words from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All are his precepts trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with the faithfulness and the uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. That's the God that we've come to worship this day. That's the God that we've come to serve and to encourage one another to do just that. Welcome to worship. Let's continue as we sing this first hymn. As you know, there are turning points in, in history, 
Joshua led the people of God through one of those. We're going to hear more about him and his people uh, a little bit later in our service. But we sense as a congregation that we too are in a, a turning point time in our own history, in our own community. And uh, it's a time for courage, time for compassion uh, during a time of change. So with that in mind, let's pray together. Our Lord, as we look to the past, may we learn to depend on you and not looking to human leaders to provide what only you can offer. Guide us into the future that you have planned for us with courage to take risks and step out, expecting actually more than we can humanly accomplish. Open our eyes to your vision May we come alive to impossibilities made possible by your spirit. Broaden our imagination as we are reminded of your promises. Expand our confidence as we experience your presence with us. And provide your wisdom as we view life from your perspective. We trust you as you call all of us together in community Continue to form us and reform us and transform us. We would evolve into a, a winsome and wondering and world-loving family of faith. Our Lord, we're grateful for your word that guides us and reminds us of what is central to life and faith. Light our hope as we allow your word to light our path. Give us your courage and comfort to receive your healing and to pass on your love to the world. Lord, we would face our fears head on as we fill our minds and as we meditate on things that are true and right. Enable us not only to meditate on your promises and commands, but to act on them. Not being content to merely reflect on your words, but to make them the focus of life and faith and the motivation of our faithfulness. Protect us, Lord, from being disheartened when life is difficult. Teach us to engage in each present moment, aware of the strength that you provide and of all that can be accomplished as we trust you. Lead us step by step and empower us to be strong all along the way as individuals and as your community. We pray in your name. And now we ask uh, prayers for our own community, prayers of healing for Janet Havens and Christy Lydon, for Karen Sidney, Pat Shulo, and Tom Smullen. Prayers of comfort for Andy Ernst at the death of his father, Charlie Ernst. We pray for the memories that we have of people who have passed on before us. And the altar flowers today are to remind us, uh, Judy and Dick Wesley, in loving memory of their parents, Anton and Hannah, Warren and Wilma. And now I invite you to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We welcome you again, those of you who are in person and those who are online. Uh, it's wonderful that we're able to gather in all of these ways. Just a reminder, there's, there's no adult education this morning because of MEA weekend, but next Sunday, come and enjoy that together. Speaking of enjoying, next Sunday, 11 o'clock, right after this service, 
Say it together, trunk or treat. Trunk or treat. I, I still have memories. I mean, we're talking 65 years ago, going from door to door. All you'd do, you'd knock on the door, dress in something silly, and you'd say, trick or treat, and they'd give you candy. Now, that seemed like an excellent deal to me. Well, we've got that same thing, only we go from trunk to trunk. There's still a few more trunks that we're looking for, so if you have a trunk you'd like to decorate, hand out some candy, enjoy the kids next Sunday, uh, let, let us know at the Connection Corner. But fr family, friends, people in the neighborhood, everyone, uh, all, all are welcome. So come and enjoy that fun activity next Sunday. Baptism. As a pastor, there's nothing better than Baptism Sunday. It's a chance for us to celebrate again one of our two sacraments as Congregationalists. Of course, it's communion and baptism. A chance for us to hear from families their desire to live a life that will be a model for their child. And then we as a congregation get to say, but we're with you too. We're going to walk with you and support you, encourage you, and pray for you. Baptism is that outward sign of an inward conviction. Parents in infant baptism have a chance to declare that about their child. And then we as a church and they as a family work together to help raise them in a way that one day they will confirm the faith of their parents and continue on their faith journey. I'm excited because... We love the Fronick family. Well, we love all the families of the church. But well, we love the Fronicks. And uh, a chance for us to have Pat and Jessica come and bring their son Colin and as we say a prayer and bless this child and say some important words, come up here. And bring all your godparents as well. I'm first gonna ask them some important questions. You can come. Yeah, more the merrier. Some of you are not going to be able to see this, but they're wearing, they're wearing Georgie stickers. <laughs> so, Pat and Jessica, I'm going to ask you some important questions. Our congregation is going to be listening to them. And then after hearing your desires, your hopes, we're going to then offer some words to you. I hope you'll listen to us and take us at our word as we seek to walk alongside you and be a part of Colin's life as we seek to be a part of all kids' lives. So let's put those questions up. Pat Jessica, do you renounce all evil and powers in this world which defy God's righteousness and love? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that separate you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior? I do. And will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word and showing his love to your life's end? I will, with God's help. <laughs> do you parents accept your responsibility for sharing the Christian faith with your child, nurturing him in the love of the Lord, and by your word and example, teaching him to love God and to love others? By God's grace. Well, we heard them, right? We heard their intentions, we heard their desires, and now we need to let them know they're not alone on this journey. So let us, as a congregation, share our thoughts as well. Congregation, what can we affirm about this child? As this child grows in our congregation, how will we show him that he is a child of God? What will we expect of this child? C. 
sit with us at this table, confirm the heritage which we will pass along to him, and as an adult, faithfully live and work toward the coming of Christ's kingdom. Do you promise, congregation, to work toward creating a nurturing environment for this child and for all of our children? Then may God be with us. Amen. Amen. Colin, are you going to come to me, pal? Yeah, look at you. This is a good looking kid. Yeah. You're looking at me like, what is up with this guy? I'm going to put you right there. Pat and Jessica, what is the Christian name of this child? Colin, Colin Patrick, Patrick Fromick. All right, I got it. Colin, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are marked now, Colin Patrick Fronick, with the cross of Christ, and you are sealed in baptism now and forever. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for this beautiful child. Thank you for all of our children. Lord, would you rain down a blessing upon this child? Will you inspire and encourage and support the family as they seek to live a life worthy of him to follow? Will you bless him? Will he experience and, and grow into the fullness of all of what you intend for him, that he might experience the life that you long for him to have? For we bless him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you his peace, now and forever, amen and amen. How about a round of applause for these guys? Awesome, congratulations. Thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. I forgot to give them a little kiss. I forgot the kiss. Be careful, it's wet right there. <laughs> Following the, the service, they'll be out by the coffee and donuts, so you're motivated, I know, to go to the donuts. It'd be a great chance for you to support and encourage them as well. Good morning, friends. It's that time in the service. All kids, raise your hand. Fantastic. Yes, there are a couple. Yes, some adult kids in the room as well. So kids, let's head to God, God's garden through that door. Meanwhile, congregation, let's sing the kids out with God's garden. Come, oh come, come to the garden, gather round, come without fear, known by name, here in God's garden, all are welcome here. Have fun, kids. Ready? Have fun, kids. Go see Dave. There we go. Thanks, everybody. Careful, it's a little slippery here, Jeff. It's an enthusiastic baptism. Right. Now is the time to pass the peace of Christ to one another, whether you're online, at home, uh, share the peace of Christ with those who are with you. One of the things I received when, I, when we were all home during COVID was that during that time, from time to time, someone would text me and say, Mark, thinking about you, have a great day. Well, something like that. If you're at home or, or here, you uh, turn your phone off afterwards, but you can uh, text someone and just tell them that you're thinking of them and wish them God's peace. Otherwise, if you're here in person, stand and share God's peace together.
This is the sound of one voice, one spirit, one voice, the sound of one who makes a choice. This is the sound of one voice, this is the sound of one voice. This is the sound of voices too, the sound of me singing with you, helping each other to make it through. This is the sound of voices too. This is the sound of voices too. Go ahead and sing it out. Ready? This is the sound of voices three. Singing together in harmony. Surrendering to the mystery. This is the sound of voices three. This is the sound of voices three, all of us. This is the sound of all of us. Singing with love and the will to trust. Leave the rest behind, it'll turn to dust. This is the sound of all of us. This is the sound of all of us. This is the sound of one voice. One people, one voice. A song for every one of us. This is the sound of one voice. This is the sound of one voice. The scripture this morning is from Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness in the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea in the west, shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As it was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall lead this people to possess the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate, it on, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Little secret is oftentimes people think that in order to celebrate sacraments, you have to be a pastor. Truth be told, you don't. 
Truth be told, anyone can lead communion and anyone can offer a baptism. We just don't tell people that because we want to do them all. There's nothing better than the church standing together, thinking about the life of a, of a small child and a family who's looking for the support and encouragement for their faith and the journey of it. To surround ourselves, to, to make promises, to hear ourselves make those promises, to, to engage in the community at a level that we don't always get to do or don't always choose to do, but certainly during the sacraments we do. It's a good day. Good day to be in church together or to be watching online. My, my second ministry job after serving the church I grew up at was in South St. Paul. Now, to be honest, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a South St. Paul. I, I just knew that you kind of drove through there on the way to Afton Alps to go skiing. I did realize that there was kind of a smell that came out of that space, but I wasn't going to learn until many years later why. As I started my ministry there, I inherited a fall retreat for about 50 kids. I didn't even know how many kids there were even in the program. Well, as we got ready to leave, I realized I had 19 kids and six leaders, four of which I had recruited to come from my previous church because the program had no volunteers. I felt like this was going to be a disaster. First of all, the fact that I needed to pay for 50 kids was going to wipe my whole budget out for the year. I was able to negotiate that, but as I began the weekend, nothing, nothing I did worked. Nothing I did encouraged kids. Nothing I did engaged the kids. They always had their arms crossed and their head down. I thought to myself, I can't do this. I can't do this. You see, everything that I had trained to do, everything that I had worked in previous settings, nothing worked. I was, I was so upset that by that second night I couldn't sleep. I pondered tearfully what I could do since I believed ministry was now not in my future. Tears streaming down my face, feeling like such a loss. I was thinking about how I could possibly get through one more day with these kids. When suddenly, the rising sun broke into my room and hit me right in the face. At that moment, I felt the presence of God powerfully present with me. I was refilled with hope and confidence that I could continue the work I was called to do. I felt assured that God would be the source of my strength and courage if I would but trust and strive to follow as God would lead. Those moments have become a very important experience in my life. I go back to that from time to time. I remember it in challenging times when I feel like I'm falling short of my potential. Charles Schultz, the writer of the Penis comics that made Charlie Brown and Snoopy famous, once said, there is no heavier burden than an unfulfilled potential. There's no heavier burden than an unfulfilled potential. To live a life in which we choose not to strive to live up to the potential that God has given us is such a burden. Church, I am convinced, I am convinced that building on our past, we together have a potential to do great things for God. We have a strong future if we would choose to believe it. William Carey, the father of modern missions, preached a sermon in 1792 that contained this challenge. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. 
Expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. I am convinced, congregation, I'm convinced that there's truth in that statement because I believe that as a community, we're only really missing one key ingredient that keeps this church from pushing forward and reaching that next level of potential for this church to build on the dynamic that this history that we have of 76 years is passing along to us. That one thing I think we're missing right now is courage. Courage to embrace a future that God has for us. From our scripture today, the story of Joshua is predicated on this willingness to receive Moses' leadership mantle courageously. Joshua was going to need to trust God's promise of faithfulness, and he might fearlessly lead the people of God into that promised land. Church, our opportunity in this season is to courageously accept and live by God's promises and to seek and to claim our promised land. Possessing courage entails several qualities that enable us to face difficult doubt, disappointment, despair, even death, or whatever dreadful other D the word you might come up with might throw at us. Courage is when we decide to put our faith into action, even against the odds we feel. Because to have courage is to act in accordance with our beliefs and our values. If we say we believe in something, we should be willing to stand for that belief, even as we face challenges. That's why the title of this sermon is Safety in Numbers. We can face that challenge, the challenges, together. All of us, together. Safety in numbers, as my mom used to say. Courage, therefore, is something we need to face the future, especially a future that has felt so uncertain, hasn't it? As we've endured the coronavirus, as we've faced, faced racial unrest and injustice, as we've dealt with economic challenges and war, it's been a challenging time. There will be more challenging times for sure but we can choose to face them courageously, together, all of us. We need to act courageously so that we will not be paralyzed by life circumstances and the fear that can come or the anxiety that we'll experience. We need courage so we don't compromise our convictions due to difficult circumstances. It's seasons like this that Paul was addressing to his young protege, Timothy, when he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Paul reminding Timothy, encouraging us, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Furthermore, courage isn't about being some kind of superhero either. It's about exerting the courage that God has given us to face life's everyday challenges. It's living into the choices we have and will make. It's choosing between God's leading and what is convenient, or choosing one's convictions over comfort. In short, it takes courage to be a follower of Jesus. It takes courage to obey God and fully experience the life meant for us and that God longs to give to us. Unfortunately, many of us don't believe we can be courageous. We don't think we can follow Jesus as his disciples did or as Esther did or as the Apostle Paul did, or other people of faith that we can read about in the Bible or know from church history. 
but we can. We can. And it comes to us making a choice. Many of us see ourselves like Joshua. And the way he felt when he was about to lead the people from the wilderness into God's promised land. Several times in our passage, God has to say to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Clearly Joshua wasn't feeling that way. The cross the river into the promised land already occupied by people. How can I be like Moses? How can I possibly do this? By being strong and courageous. Joshua probably felt incapable of this tax. I mean, who wouldn't following such a strong leader like Moses? But not even Moses would lead them into the promised land. So who did Joshua think he was to accomplish what Moses failed to do? He was Joshua. He was Joshua. He was Joshua, the one God had called and equipped. And if God calls and God equips, then we can step courageously into the path that God is illuminating for us. Our story for today tells us that God encouraged him. God gave Joshua the courage so that he could fulfill the purposes that called him to. Won't God do that for us as well? Each of us on our own journey, but us, collective us, all of us as the church. Won't God do it for us as well? Hasn't God already shown us he can? One of the more popular definitions of courage is that courage isn't the absence of fear. Rather, it's moving forward despite our fear, right? Courage is, isn't the absence of fear. Rather, it's moving forward despite our fear. Which reminds me of the story of two kids who went to visit a dentist. The kids said, Doc, will you pull a tooth right now? Don't need no gas or Novocaine, just yank it out. The dentist said, sure. Now that's what I call being brave and, and courageous. Now which tooth do you want pulled? The first kid turned to the friend and said, come on, show Doc your tooth. We wonder if being strong and courageous is for someone else. We wonder if it's for the other person, but it's not. God's call is to each of us to experience that infilling, that encouragement, to be strong and courageous with what strength God gives us. I like what Martin Luther King said about courage. The ultimate measure of a person is not what they stand in, what, excuse me. I like what Martin Luther King Jr. said about courage. The ultimate measure of a person is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. The ultimate measure of a person is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. So I ask, what will it take for this church, for you and me to face our future and claim our promised land? What will it take for us to sense that strength and to step courageously towards it? Well, first, it's going to take our faithfulness. It's going to take us choosing to be faithful. Joshua was a faithful servant. We heard it already in Joshua 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. For 40 years, Joshua faithfully served and never once did he rebel against God's placement of him as an assistant, as a servant. He never grumbled or complained about the hardships, about what he thought Moses should be doing or what he thought Moses had done wrong. He faithfully served behind the scenes as God called. Because one of the first lessons 
we learn as leaders is to be faithful followers. To follow the plan, to follow the vision, to follow our leaders, to follow God's leading. Speaking about which instrument was the hardest to play, celebrated composer and conductor Leonard Bernstein said, I can always get plenty of first violinists, but to find one who plays the second violin with as much enthusiasm, now that's a problem. And yet if no one plays second, we have no harmony. Don't you love that quote? To be courageous, we must be faithful to what the Lord has given us. Because when we are loyal to God's calling, there will be purpose and harmony in the church amongst all of us. Because God desires a faithfulness that can lead to unity. In the parable of the talents, Jesus says that the Lord would reward those servants who faithfully handled what he so graciously given. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. So the first step to claiming our promised land is a courageous willingness to be faithful. And second of all, we're gonna need to follow God's leading. To follow as the Spirit directs. To be courageous, Joshua needed to be filled with God's leading. And so Joshua chapter one, verse eight says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall be successful. It's also the heart of the psalmist when he said in Psalm 119, 11, your word I've hidden my heart that I might not sin against you. To meditate on God's word means to ponder it to turn it over and over again in our hearts and minds, to let it do its work in us, to chew on it the way a cow would chew on its cud. In other words, keep bringing it up, keep chewing on it, keep pondering, keep wondering, and then following. It's what Mary did when she was told the news that the Messiah the Son of God would be born to her and from her would be the Messiah of the world. The scripture said that Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Friends, as we ponder God's word, meditate on it, it becomes firmly entrenched in our lives. But then, then comes the application, right? James 1, says, but be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. James is saying that we're only deceiving ourselves if we're not doing what we say we believe. Church, if we want to fully realize the promises of God, then we must continue, continue to listen to and obey and apply God's leading. Crossing into the promised land, we must be courageous and faithful as we trust God's leading. And lastly, we need to do, we need to do, <laughs> sorry, lastly, what we need to do to take those first steps towards God and God's leading is to trust. Church, we need to trust God. To Joshua, the Lord said, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Is that a statement that we can trust? Is that a statement we can believe? Joshua's courage hinged upon his trusting God 
and God at God's word. It's true for us as well. Church, is God faithful? Can we, will we trust that God will keep promises? God said to the Israelites in Deuteronomy 20, when you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots, an army larger than your own, do not fear them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Before you engage in battle, the priests shall come forward and speak to the troops and say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are drawing near to do battle against your enemies. Do not lose heart. Do not be afraid or panic or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies and to give you victory. Today we're not standing against an army, but we are in a world that needs to experience God's grace and mercy, to understand the invitation to live as God calls. Our enemies are against the injustice and the pain and the sorrow and the fear and the loneliness of those around us. To be the church that stands against those evils in the world and empowers and encourages the world to experience their best. If our trust is in God, no matter what the circumstances may be, then God will give us the courage to face them and to overcome them. Friends, at mission, our mission here at Meeting House Church is to make a difference in our community, to make a difference in the world, in the name of Jesus. And it will take courage to make that difference. So what about us? Will we listen when God speaks? God speaks by the Spirit in us, through scripture, prayer, circumstances, and others? Will we listen when God speaks? Will we respond by courageously living out our values with no excuses? Remember, there's safety in numbers. It will take all of us to encourage the rest of us. It'll take all of us Offering ourselves, seeking to be faithful to that leading that God will give. That we might experience that promised land that God intends for us. I pray that we will. Let us pray. God, thank you for the example of Joshua. Thank you for this scripture that reminds us that you have a future for us and a hope for us. And that if we will listen to your leading and faithfully, courageously follow, we will experience it. And it won't be just for us, but it'll be for all that we bring with us. That all that we will meet along the journey and all that we have the opportunity to be a blessing for and to. So God, I pray by the power of your spirit that you would draw us even a few steps closer to that promised land that you have for us. Help us as a church to be that blessing, that, that loving presence in a world, in the world around us. For we pray this in your name. Amen.
Thank you so much. Beautiful. Sunday by Sunday, we call one another to generosity. That's about money and opportunities that we'll give in the future. We also want to thank you for your generosity to our ministry in the past. Uh, we appreciate your faithfulness so much. If you want to give today, there's a box out in the North Commons, or you can uh, text Meeting House to the number that's printed in your bulletin and uh, follow the prompts, and you can do it that way. So continue to give, continue to be generous. Now, how have you seen God, God's generosity at work in, uh, in your lives? We have two young women, Sarah Hudson and Elsa Anderson, that are going to share some of their thoughts. How have you seen God's uh, generosity at work, and what would you hope for our church as we move forward? Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, one way I've seen generosity in our church is in the middle school youth group. Um, I am a middle school youth group leader, and uh, this fall I've seen the middle schoolers do a lot of service projects, and they've been really generous with their time. For example, last week they made little goodie bags with candy for Halloween, that we gave to Avivo, which helps people struggling with homelessness get back on their feet. Um, and they always just really like doing these service projects, which is really good to see. Um, also, in high school youth group, we've been doing some weekly service projects. We have made Play-Doh for Whittier Wildflowers, which has been really fun, and we've made PB&Js for people struggling with hunger. Um, and so those weekly things we really like to do. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think that also financial generosity is a big part of it. I definitely see that like with things that we do in youth group, like going on camping trips, um, without the financial generosity, we wouldn't be able to do that. And so I think that's a very important part and it's very valuable and, um, contributes to the youth program and helps us to keep wanting to go to church and engage in the community. Um, looking to the future, um, I would really love to see more intergenerational um, generosity events. For example, Trunk or Treat is coming up and I'm really excited to see everyone of all ages come together um, and make it a great day for the kids. So events like that, um, really help make generosity a community event. 
I'm definitely hoping for openness and love and acceptance in the future uh, towards new ideas and um, everyone and just coming together to be generous together. Thanks, guys. Just stay here just for a moment. All right. Let me pray for us. Our Lord Jesus, thank you that you have been so generous to us in giving us your whole self. Help us now to give our whole selves to you in practical, simple, ongoing ways. Thank you for loving us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much. family has gone out. They're, they're diving into the donuts as I'm watching them. There should be a few left for you. A chance for you to greet them, to celebrate with them, to honor them, to offer your extension, and you're welcome to them as well. Remember, there's no adult ed today, but there will be again next week, and Wednesday will be as usual. So come and have dinner and spend the evening with us. Joshua's story calls us to trust a faithful God, to listen as God leads, and then seek to be faithful. 
to lean into our faithfulness. And my friends, together we can do that. It's going to take all of us to face this challenge. God is going to give us all we need. That's the promise. Let's look for God's movement in our lives. Let's be renewed and restored and seek to be faithful as God calls us to be. For God goes before us and prepares the way. Amen? Amen. Amen.